Hey guys, I'm Terry. And I'm Brian, and welcome to the Forest Farm Project. We got the bit we need so we can finish up the plumbing from last time, get up on the roof and drill a hole, and get some drain lines run under. Mm -hmm. Or Dad can, I'm going to film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All righty. I mentioned earlier we do have our Milwaukee three inch hole saw we needed to drill. One thing you want to do is look and see is my hole going to be big enough for the pipe and this pipe is going to be setting like we showed you last video down in the floor system here so uh, you want to make sure that it'll go in there. We've actually got some play plus the thickness of the bit so that'd be great I and mean, we're going to have a, a hole that's uh, over a quarter probably three eighths inch bigger than we need that'll give us a little wiggle room there. I love the terminology they use on these bits. It's the hole dozer. <laughs> you don't come in there with a little bobcat. You bring the dozer when you want to make a hole with this thing. So anyway, quick connect. Love it. This super hog is awesome. Yeehaw! One thing about this big old heavy drill, it is heavy. And I like that because uh, and, and the length of it is it's excellent. Normally you got that little short D handle. When it grabs, it just jerks your arm around. This thing is so big, as of yet, it hadn't grabbed enough to throw me for a loop. Now when it does, it might beat the fool out of me and I might learn a new lesson, but so far it's been awesome. But I can put it against my leg or whatever, you know, and it's gonna it's gonna do the job. Alright. We already measured over last video. I've got a line here where I want to drill my hole. Uh, this is where the pipe's gonna come down, hook into here for our drain system on this washer. And I can pretty much center it right there. And here we go. We got that uh, inch and a half bottom plate cut out. Next layer is the uh, plywood, and we need to see how thick that plywood is, so this is going to give us a chance to measure it accurately. We're through the plywood. And this is a sample of what we need to match with our subfloor that goes throughout this house. So let's see what it measures. It measures... Exactly one half inch. Go ahead and mark where we need to be, roughly. I'd say if we go to there. That's going to get this side below the flooring. Yeah, there's a the floor. We'll be turned out below it. We want to be below it and then turn that way. So, we need to be at least that low. Well, we got a little issue here. I got the bit extension on his pipes in a way. I can't quite get it in the hole. So, hopefully, this is going to help. Pull this quick disconnect, slide it in the hole. We can get it down there. There we go. Now hook it on the drill. That's where that quick connect really comes in handy. You just set it down and it goes. I gotta say, these Milwaukee blades are phenomenal. Um, I've run a lot of sawzall blades, a lot of whole saw blades and whatnot, and these things are cut. And I mean, you can see in the video, they're just going right through it like nothing. Really, really pleased. Um, We've had a lot of different types and they don't always work. Alrighty, let's get this hole.
I've obviously got to get this pipe down in there and it's not going to go. So, I could cut a hole right there and do like that. We're just going to take this whole thing apart. So this is what we want to accomplish. Now we can run our pipe in between here. We got room to work. We have got to go from here, inside this pipe, just to the lip just to this edge right here where the pipe will slide in up here and get a rough estimate we need to be like I said before below this plywood below this where the floor is going to be where this turns out but we're putting a little bit lower just to give us a little bit of wiggle room here uh, we don't want it right up against the floor so that is about to the bottom of that pipe right there inside of there is going to be approximately 15 inches will get us below that plywood all right 15 inches right there and this three inch hole saw said dozer on it because it just plows through that wood which you could see <laughs> they call this blade which is made more for a finer cut steel or this pvc they call it the torch because it burns through it <laughs> you gotta love their terminology In my previous videos, I didn't have safety glasses on. Messing with chemicals, especially drilling, anything like that, you really need safety glasses. I don't always do it. Don't do what I do. Do what you should do. You're taking your own eyes into your own hands. And these chemicals get in your eyes that don't feel good. Uh, one thing, we didn't do a good job on the last video of showing you, but when you're getting ready to glue these pipes together, you want to prime. Hey, go and look at all that. Cleaner. Okay, you want to prime the pipe and you got to prime the inside of this fitting and the inspector wants to see that if there's not primer on there he might make you redo it and that's a it's a primer cleaner it, it supposedly softens the pipe so we're going to glue this on here it's in there you always want to push. You can look down inside there. Make sure that pipe is seated in there. Try not to get it too much all over me. Prime the outside of this one. Don't want to spill it. Put some glue on it. And make sure you keep it straight when you put it in there. Yeah, when you get this on there, you want to make sure that that thing's turned where you want it. So I'm going to get that out of my way, get that out of my way. This goes in here like so, and up in there, and we're in. Make sure you're pointing straight out. All right, we've got the drain line set up. Now we're going to run this pipe out the roof because the ground's still saturated, even though it's finally a sunny day. We've got a couple days here of sun, and then it's going to supposedly start raining Wednesday. This is Monday. So what are you going to do? Anyway, we need to run this out the roof. Let's get that set up. All right, now we need to get a hole in the top plate for this vent pipe. And you can see that the center line on this pipe is eight inches over. So up top, where the vent's going, we need to drill eight inches over, which falls right about there, which is right about there. We'll go about half of that, inch and three quarters. Let's we'll see if we can get a pipe through here. Yay, we're in the attic. All right. Okay, from that top plate there, or from that plate, right there, where I'm touching, down inside this pipe to the lowest part is 75 and a half inches. Additionally, we need to get through to the top of this, which is another three inches. So that's 78 and a half inches, 75 and a half plus the three is 78. And we got to get above this uh, two by six, which is five and a quarter on this particular two by six. So we had 
75 and a half to here plus the three is 78 and a half plus five and a quarter is what Brian 83 and three quarters 83 and three quarters plus yeah. we need to get above that a little bit yeah that's to the top of here our pipe needs to go across this ceiling and then out the roof because we're going to come over away from the edge of the roof some and get over here a couple of voids over so 80 what 83 and three quarters Plus a little bit. So 83 and three quarters to the top of here. We're going to give ourselves another inch and a half and we'll set boards here and run that pipe on top of them. That gives us a little bit of room to work with when we're trying to put all this together. So all total we need to be about 85 and three quarters. 85 and a quarter. 85 and a quarter. All right, so 85 and a quarter is what we measured. That's going to be right there. We bought this thing a few years back. It's called a plate vise. You can stick various different items through it. Just take a 4x4 four four through here. And then it leans like I did with this. You can put a 2x4 or 2x6 through here. And then you just lean it and it holds it in place. With this 2 inch pipe, it tells you half inch and 3 quarter inch pipe up there. 2 to 2 and a half inch pipe here. It's telling you what size pieces of equipment or lumber or whatever will fit through what holes. It really does come in handy if we ever think to get it out. So you want to get it somewhere close to the work area that you're going to be cutting. And it's pretty solid. I mean, it's a little wobbly, but it's pretty good for this. Okay, we're going to dry fit all of this just like we did the other because that way, if you made a mistake, you can cut a new piece. You don't have to un cut things that are already glued and throw it away. You can just cut a new piece and save that other piece for somewhere else. That is the roof right there. So, can't get through here with that cross brace. You don't see these cross braces in new construction too much. I know one guy that likes to use them. And I think he even might have swayed away from them now, but they make the walls a lot more rigid back and forth. People just don't do it anymore. Let's see if I can't pry this thing off the wall a little bit. We can slide behind it. Let's see if we can get it around there. All right. So that's going to go there. The rest is going to go up top. Let's make sure we're high enough up there. Now we've got our pipe sticking up. And I'm going to put this uh, 90 on top, just like it'll be when we finish. Again, we're just doing a dry fit. Make my mark so I know where I'm going to be. Plenty of coverage. From when we glue it now let's see if it's gonna here's a two by four right here we can go by let's see if it's gonna be that extra two by four high that i was wanting to do and yes it is it's a little bit higher than we thought isn't it yep perfect coverage yep the reason we want to be a little high for one reason it's easier to work with but when we get where we're going to go through the roof we have to have a cross brace under the pipe wherever it's going up and then strap that pipe to it. Now this pipe's going to set right in here somewhere. We're going to go through the roof right here. The reason we didn't go through the roof over that way where the pipe comes up is, let me point at it. This is the uh, end of the house. We didn't want that pipe sticking up right at the end of the house. It'd kind of be an eyesore. You come back, you know, we're about four feet from that outside by the time you had the boxing out there four feet or better from the outside edge so it won't be quite as obvious that you've got a vent pipe here which I mean everybody's got them but no sense in having them sticking out like a sore thumb here's another 90 that we're going to do we're just dry fitting again and then we're going to go straight up we got to get through that roof and we want another foot above the roof so right now this is basically what we're going to have and it'll be right about where we're at we're going to need about uh, 16 and a half inches to the roof and then we need 12 inches above the roof plus you've got a half inch of plywood on that roof and you've got shingles on that roof we're just going to add like another 16 inches it'll be 32 inches long and we'll cut off up on the roof at the 12 inch mark i think that'd be the safe bet we only do it once that way so we're going to go ahead and mark on the roof where we want this vent to go out and that is going to be from here, up that way somewhere. That's the edge roughly, and we want to go that way. 
and that's about the center line. And again, we're going to shift this wherever we need when that hole's up there, so it won't matter if we're exact. All right, our hole needs to be past that line. Somewhere in this vicinity, like maybe right around there. I'm going to mark where the halfway point on that pipe is, roughly. So that would be right between them two marks. This is not rocket science. We're just trying to get a hole in the roof. We could take our hole saw and just pop a hole through that roof. But we don't know where we're at on the shingles. And what I like to do, take this little insulation wire here. Okay, we'll take this, this insulation hanging wire. We cut it off at a really sharp angle with our lineman pliers. And then we use this to drill through hardwood, through plywood, or there's carpet, just whatever we need to do to get a hole and then be able to pinpoint it and, and gives us a lot of variation. Instead of drilling a big two inch hole and being stuck with it, I'm gonna drill a much smaller hole here. I can go on the roof and we'll be up there in just a minute and show you uh, where we can use this small hole to work back and forth and fit into the shingles just a little bit better when we put our uh, boot up on the roof. that wire up there our insulation hanging wire up there and we're gonna go on the roof see what we got all right so here's the insulation wire we just shot through the roof and the reason we did that we didn't know where we were gonna fall on these shingles so we wanted this thing to work out to where ideally when we set it on the roof you want it straight up and down uh, so uh, we ideally want this edge to be near one of these edges of one of the rows of shingles well, um, as you can see, if we put this on here, the edge of that line is about right there. This is working out perfect. So if I drill my hole, this is going to be the absolute low side. And you can see my wires at this side of this hole rather than over here or in the middle. So if we drill our hole, with this being the lowest edge of our hole, it's going to work out to where this thing falls exactly where we want it. We want this to go up under a shingle. That way any water running down is going to get onto here and run down. And then you put some adhesive under here to seal it up so no water goes into the kitchen. And then you nail this down, you're good to go. So now we were on the roof and we wanted to go to the high side from this wire so that we fell in the right spot in the shingles to make all this work out nice and pretty. We, if we come out in the middle of a shingle, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, you know, if you're in the middle of a joint, you just have to cut the shingle around the uh, the boot, but we'd rather not have to do that if we don't have to. I'm going to use this, and we want to be above that wire, so I'm just going to mark above that wire with this, and it's going to give us a real close position of where that thing needs to go through. Ugh. Come on out of there. There we go. We got through. You see that little spot of daylight right there? That's where this bit went through. The shingles were on top of this plywood that's still in this bit. So this plywood was a roof plywood. And we are going to take this drill and stick it back through that little hole. Brian's going to, I'm gonna go on the roof and I'm gonna lay this over that hole, over the shingles. So it's right where that hole is, centered on here, and I'm gonna stand on it. That way he can drill and the drill's gonna go into here to keep it centered and should drill uh, should cut the should cut the shingles off right with this hole. That's the theory. We'll see how it works. <laughs> Here's the hole where we came through. Brian's going to drill out these shingles. I'm going to put this two by six on top, and I'm going to hold it down with my feet like so, and he's going to drill. I'm on either side. Shouldn't get me. Hopefully, it'll keep the shingles from getting tore up. All right. Well, our plan worked. The plugs came out. There's the pieces of shingle that were up there. Nice and round and we got a round hole up here for a round pipe to put our boot over now let's see if it worked out perfect nice round hole we tried getting this pipe up through that hole we can't do it because of the framework and whatnot we have to shoot it down from the top here's the boot that's going to go on here it's got a rubber seal you slip it down over here and then it's got to go under the shingles so we have to separate these shingles from this layer from this layer up here 
and you have to do that very gently. We're probably going to have to pull this loose again to get this on here. Let's see. Slides right over, it gets a nice tight fit. See if you can turn it sideways and get it to go under there. It'll twist up under. Don't want to break these shingles if we can help it. It came back off of that 90, but I've got this holding it up now. All right, we've got this down here, and for now, it's going to keep the rainwater out. We've got to come back and nail it a couple places. We're going to come back and put some uh, roofing adhesive underneath it here between this and the shingle to help seal it off so no water runs under. It should just run downhill and past this with no problem. But we're going to go ahead and put that construction adhesive on here just to be on the safe side. Wherever we put our nails, we'll also put some over the nails, just some tar or whatever. But that'll help... Uh, whatever sealant we can come up with. That'll help keep those nails from leaking as well. For now, we're gonna leave this and come back later and get it straight. We just wanna make sure it's all gonna fit. Let's see if we have the uh, 12 inches we needed. And I'm sure we're over 12 inches and that'll be fine. We just wanna make sure we had enough. 14 inches. So let's head down there and we've got all this dry fit right now. We're gonna glue it all in place, show you how we do that. Again, we'll come back another time and seal this up. We're not gonna get it done today. At this point, we've got the vent pipe assembled. It's all dry fit, meaning it's not glued yet. We want to make sure everything fit together and made it out the roof and could get the proper angles and the proper distances and heights and everything that we want. Everything's looking really good. Now we have to figure out how we, do we want to assemble this thing so that we can move the parts we need to move and change angles and whatnot. We've got a couple things we need to work out. So what's important is to get this pipe going straight out of the roof. We don't want it tilting back that way. We don't want it tilting out this way. We want it straight up and down. I put a level on it and I could see that I need this block of wood to hold this thing where we want it. So I'm gonna screw it in right quick. Now we've got that block in place and I had my, my level on here earlier and I saw that I needed to come out this way. So what we gotta do is we gotta figure out what do we glue first? If you glue the wrong thing, if we glue that bottom pipe down there and we glue this 90 on both sides, then we can no longer move it back and forth and be able to get this pipe to move either direction we need it so that we can get that pipe straight up and down. So we could glue the up pipe into the 90 and we're gonna glue this pipe that runs across into its 90 for now. And we'll glue the pipe that's running down into the bottom. So all those will be fixed. And then we'll figure out what we got to do from there and just get it lined up where we want it and then make everything fit. But you got to make sure if you glue the wrong thing and you got it way over here and all that's glued already all the way down through there, you're stuck. You can't change that angle and you're going to have to cut something somewhere so that you can twist it and put a connector in there. And you really don't want to have to go through all that, I don't think. So a little bit of planning, make sure that you can get it where you need it move it around, put your level on that pipe, make sure it's going out the roof properly. You don't want to be leaning, go out, look at your back of your house and see a pipe sticking out sideways. That's going to look like somebody didn't know what they were doing. Now you might think this is just a vent pipe, and it is just a vent pipe, but it does need to be sealed just as importantly as a water drain pipe because even though this is a vent, for one, it's venting gases out of your house. You don't want gases leaking out any of these joints into your house. Additionally, that pipe sticking out the roof is exposed to the rain. So it may be a minimal amount, but water's gonna go down that pipe and run all the way down through here. And you don't want that leaking into your house over the years either. So it is a drain pipe as well, but it's really a vent pipe. Okay, I'm not showing you all this, but um, I did wipe these pipes off. They get staticky if it's dry like it is right now and dirt's just clean. You gotta clean them up a little bit. So now we're gonna glue this as the top piece that runs across. Can you Now, this is the cross piece, and it goes on there. So we glued this pipe right there, but not down there. 
we can still turn this back and forth. Now, we're going to glue this to here, and we'll still be able to move this around until we get it where we want, and then we'll line these up and get them glued. So, got to clean this pipe out. Bring the cleaner up here. I'm going to make a mess now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is where it gets dangerous too when you're working over your head. You could get this stuff in your face really easy. There we go. And there we go. Miraculously, I didn't splatter too much. Put that lid on because it could be dangerous. Now the glue. Here we go. That should do it. Now we have to decide which joint do we want to do last. We have this one left to do and the one that's coming straight up from the uh, sanitary vent. Well, this one could be glued and still move somewhat. The one down there, if you look over here, Brian, that has to give. It has to move this way, that way, back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and glue this end and put my level here and see if it's straight. Hope for the best. That is level. So to make my job a little easier, I'm going to come over here and make a mark under this pipe. And this way we can put that glue on that pipe and swing it over here. And this is going to be close enough. It doesn't have to be 100% 90 degree angle out the roof. The closer the better. you got a sloped roof. You're not going to be able to tell real accurately. So let's get that thing glued up. The more joints you get connected, the more difficult it is to get them connected. You really got to think about those last couple of connections what's going to be the easiest to get done because it's all going to be a little bit snug. So this is probably going to be best and then that end one hopefully works out. We'll see here in a minute. That should do it there. I'm holding on my mark here and letting this glue set up a minute so that it's twisted the way we want. I jumped back over here to this last connection and made sure that it's down and that it's properly oriented so that when we do glue it, it'll go. So you got to kind of work it all out. That last joint's really crucial. If you don't have this part right, you won't be able to make that if it's twisted or angled the wrong way. So I think we got it though. Okay, here's the last joint. This is the crucial one because this is the last one. When we take that off of there, and it did twist on us because it's twisting up there at the roof right now, but it'll straighten back out when I put it back on here. Put some glue there. Put some not a uh, cleaner. Primer. Primer there. Better put that lid on before I drop it. Make a big old mess. Bring the glue over here closer. And the last joint. I'd probably go overkill on the glue, but I'd rather have too much and have it right. Now I gotta pull this out over here. And we're on there. And I'm double checking my uh, 90 degree back here real quick that I had marked so that I got that pipe lined up. So now I'm checking my 90 degree mark over here to make sure that we're lined up and we're perpendicular out the roof as we had hoped because that turns this back and forth when I move it left or right. And we've got it where it needs to be. Once this glue sets, it should keep it pretty much there. So now we've got to install this strap to hold this thing down and in place. 
Make sure it reaches to the wood there, over here. I'm going to cut it with my wonderful linesman pliers. So let's screw it down. Put one right here. Pipe secure. We got a 90 degree angle going up. We're in good shape. Well, we got the roof vent out of the roof and uh, it's Tied all- Tied into that sanitary tee. It's glued together. It's perpendicular to the roof, 90 degrees. Yep. We ended up getting a nice little plug here to tell us what kind of flooring system we have, which is a half inch plywood. So yep. we need to match the house, which this is the same as what's in the house. So mm -hmm. we can get that floor level. Yep. That's, that's good. And just so you guys know, we could have done this in a fraction of the time that this video took, but between making sure we say the right thing filming it repositioning then, our ladders and then brian's like dad i cannot see your hands are in the way oh now your head's in the way and we're like let's try this angle let's try that angle it takes we could have knocked it out three to four times longer doing yeah. this but we want to yeah. show you the details of what's going on so it takes a little while mm -hmm. so this video got a little long we're mm -hmm. going to round it up and then next video we'll be going under running drain lines and supply lines yeah we want to make sure we get the details to you on what we're doing that's the thing and we're not experts at it so we have to think this thing through okay i could glue it in there and get done i know in my mind what needs to be done yeah but i don't know the details to tell y'all it takes a little thinking yeah yeah <laughs> so we have to pan it over a little bit too yeah so we got it done though yep it's gonna it's vent. gonna vent gas that's what that's we want that's all that matters <laughs> We'll, we'll probably do the roof part where we put the boot down there and uh, glue it in and whatnot. Yeah. Um, or, well, I guess you call it glue, adhesive. When we adhere the roof boot to the roof, yeah, that'll be another video for you showing you what we do there. Yeah, yeah. Because that's something you might want to replace even if you're not doing any plumbing. You might have yeah, the boots Yeah, they get worn out, out over the years. And they'll leak and whatnot. Yeah. So that's, a, that's a handy thing to know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All but, right. Well, I guess that's about it. That's it. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Give us a big thumbs up if you like what you see. Share us with your friends. There's a heck of a lot more construction coming. We got a lot going on. Oh, yeah. See, see ya. See you next time.